Dear friends, did you know that your carpet is typically the largest investment you will make inside your home? With the exceptional quality of new carpets today, your carpet could ugly out long before it wears out. However, following the carpet care program outlined in this video, we'll see that your carpet serves you well for many years to come. So in this video, I will show you four easy steps to protect your carpet. We will cover things like preventive maintenance, show you how to protect your investment before the problems occur. Vacuuming, why it is the most important step in caring for your carpet. Spot and spill removal, because life happens. Overall cleaning, because vacuuming doesn't get everything. Preventive maintenance, friends, no carpet is absolutely stain proof. Some carpets have stain resistant treatments that improve your ability to clean stains, but not prevent them. Similarly, carpets with soil resistant treatments reduce the rate of soiling. But all carpets require regular care and maintenance. And there is often confusion about the difference between the soiling and staining of carpet. The majority of stain complaints are actually soil related. For example, many sugar based spills such as soft drinks and coffee leave a sugar residue after removal. This sticky residue readily attracts soil from ordinary shoe traffic and the resulting discolored area appears to be a stain. The same thing happens when spills are cleaned with a detergent solution and the area is not sufficiently rinsed with plain water, leaving a sticky detergent residue. This is why it is important to rinse thoroughly with water and blot dry after removing any spill. New flooring represents a substantial investment. Place doormats at all entrances, known in the industry as walk-off mats. They should be used at the exterior of all entrances to absorb the soil and moisture. They can help trap excessive dirt, sand, grit, and other substances such as oil, asphalt, or driveway sealer that would otherwise be tracked into your home. Mats should also be cleaned on a regular basis so they don't become the soil of sources themselves. When you have carpet installed or replaced, you should always use a quality pad under your carpet, particularly on the stairs. A good carpet pad not only gives better resilience and comfort underfoot, it can extend the life of your carpet. Because some carpets carry warranties with specific density and thickness requirements, be sure and review your warranty before purchasing your pad. If you have heavy furniture, it needs to be moved occasionally to avoid excessive pile crushing. Also, use floor protectors designed for carpet under the legs of tables, chairs, and other furniture to help distribute the weight. Do not use chairs or appliances with rollers or casters without a chair pad designed specifically for carpet or damage may occur. Protect your carpet when moving heavy wheeled furniture such as pianos, buffets, etc. You can prevent damage by using furniture movers. Placing a protective barrier of heavy cardboard or put plywood between the wheels and the carpeting. If you use area rugs on your carpet, be sure to clean them regularly. Clean and rake the pile of the carpet underneath them as well. Also, be sure to check the area rugs for color fastness before placing them on carpet because the color in some rugs may bleed through. After cleaning your carpet, allow it to dry completely before replacing area rugs. Protect your carpet from prolonged periods of direct sunlight with blinds, shades, or awnings. Step two, vacuuming. Like flossing your teeth, the most important step in caring for your carpet is vacuuming your carpet thoroughly and frequently, particularly in high traffic areas. Realize that walking on soiled carpet allows the soil particles to work their way below the surface of the pile, where they are more difficult to remove and can damage the carpet fibers. Frequent vacuuming removes these particles from the surface before problems can occur. For rooms with light traffic, vacuum the carpet traffic lanes twice weekly and the entire area once weekly. In areas with heavy traffic, vacuum the carpet traffic lanes daily and the entire area twice weekly. Up to three passes of the machine will suffice for light soiling. 
but five to seven passes are necessary for heavily soiled areas. Change the vacuuming direction occasionally to help stand the pile upright and reduce matting. Next, check the quality of your vacuum. A good vacuum cleaner is vital to prolonging the beauty and life of your carpet. An inexpensive machine can remove surface dirt, but will not effectively remove the hidden dirt and embedded particles in the pile. To ensure that your vacuum will conform to the highest industry standards, make sure that your vacuum cleaner is certified through the Carpet and Rug Institute, CRI Vacuum Cleaner Indoor Air Quality Program. See the links in the video description and visit www.carpet-rug.com for details and listings. Selecting the best vacuum for your type of carpet. I recommend using vacuums with a rotating brush or combination beater brush bar that agitates the carpet pile and mechanically loosens soil for removal. Carpet with thick loop pile construction, particularly wool and wool blended styles, may be sensitive to brushing or rubbing of the pile surface and may become fuzzy. For these products, I recommend a suction only vacuum or a vacuum with an adjustable brush lifted away from the carpet so it does not agitate the pile. A vacuum with a beater brush bar can be tested for excessive fuzzing in an inconspicuous location before regular use. Pay attention to vacuum bags. Replaceable paper vacuum bags do a better job of trapping small particles than cloth bags. With cloth bags, the particles pass back into the room. High efficiency vacuum bags, also called microfiltration bags, trap even the smallest microscopic particles such as mold and mildew spores and dust mite byproducts, which are often found to be a source of allergies. All vacuum bags should be checked often and replaced when half full. Check the belt and the setting. Make sure the belt is in good condition and that the brush or beater bar rotates when in contact with the carpet. Be sure to adjust the vacuum to the correct height setting for the carpet. Raise the beater brush bar to the highest setting and then lower it until it contacts the pile enough to slightly vibrate the carpet several inches away from the machine but not low enough to cause significant slowing of the motor. Changing the vacuuming direction occasionally will help stand the pile upright and help reduce matting. Let's talk about rug care for a minute. Maintaining and cleaning your area rugs requires just a few simple steps. Regular vacuuming will help rugs retain their beauty and will extend the life of the rug. You should clean spills immediately with the following method. Blot with a clean cloth, spot clean with a solution of clear dishwashing detergent, non-bleach of course, and water. Rinse with water and blot dry. Professional carpet cleaning is recommended using the hot water extraction method. You should not dry clean your rugs and you should never use bleach. Number four, overall cleaning. Vacuuming alone won't protect your carpet. Even though vacuuming can remove most soil, it is also necessary to clean your carpet on a regular basis to remove the oily, sticky soil that vacuums don't remove. These soils result from cooking vapors, air pollution, and dirt tracked in from outside. These particles of oily soil deposited on carpet fibers can cause gradual but significant dulling of colors. The color isn't lost, but is hidden under the film. If this type of soil is allowed to accumulate, it begins to attract and hold the dry soil. If the carpet is clean before it becomes too unsightly, the cleaning chore will be easier and more successful. Carpet in a typical household should be cleaned every 12 to 18 months depending on the number of residents and the amount of activity. Choosing the proper cleaning system is important. Some systems may leave residues which accelerates resoiling and defeats the whole purpose of cleaning. The recommendations below represent the best current knowledge and should help prolong the time between cleanings. But what cleaning system should you use? Shaw recommends the hot water extraction system. Research indicates that the hot water extraction system provides the best capability for cleaning. This system is commonly referred to as steam cleaning, although no steam is actually generated. The process consists of spraying a solution of water and detergent onto the carpet pile and recovering the solution and soil with a powerful vacuum into a holding tank. This can be done from a truck mounted unit outside the home with only the hose and wand brought inside 
or buy a portable system brought into the home. Shaw Industries does not recommend bonnet cleaning systems. These systems employ a rotating bonnet of terry cloth or other absorbent material to agitate the carpet pile and absorb soil. A detergent solution is sprayed onto the pile and then worked in. Bonnet cleaning is designed for commercial carpeting, not residential. Do-it-yourself carpet cleaning? Well, it is to your advantage to use professional carpet cleaners. Because of their experience, you won't have to reinvent the wheel. And besides that, their equipment has more extraction power than the rental units available to individuals, which will result in your carpet drying more quickly. Use fans to reduce drying time by moving air across the carpet in combination with a dehumidifier or air conditioner to pull moisture out of the air. Your carpeting should dry within 12 hours. The fewer hours, the better. Excessive detergent. Let's just say that less is more in carpet cleaning. This is one of the most common problems among the do-it-yourself crowd. You should use cleaning solutions with a pH less than 10, preferably near 9 and with a minimum of non-sticky residue. You can Google the material safety data sheet on almost any chemical to check its pH balance, toxicity, or other related concerns. The attraction between the detergent and the soil and oil particles is critical during the cleaning process. However, if it isn't rinsed completely, the detergent residue will continue to attract dirt particles after cleaning. Increasing the amount of cleaning solution beyond the recommended level does not increase cleaning performance, but makes the removal of detergent more difficult. This is why laundry detergent is highly discouraged as a replacement soap for carpet cleaning due to its concentration level and excessive foaming. In addition to excessive foaming, buildup of detergent residue is the most common cause of accelerated resoiling complaints. Shaw Industries also recommends a clear water rinse after cleaning. Take the time to actually read and know your warranty guidelines. Carpets with stain resistant treatments must be cleaned with products formulated for this purpose or the stain resistance will be impaired and the warranty voided. Do not use cleaning or spotting solutions that contain bleaches or optical brighteners because they can discolor the carpet. For example, OxyClean and other cleaners available at Walmart, etc. Do not use silicone-based anti-soil treatments. The only anti-soil products approved for use on Shaw carpets is DuPont Teflon or 3M Scotchgard. This information is from my own experience in the carpet cleaning industry and from recommendations from Shaw Industries, the largest manufacturer of carpet and flooring in the world. Please share it with a friend. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions regarding spills or stains you may encounter. I will also be happy to answer any general questions you may have about your carpet. I will leave affiliate links in the video description area as a sort of internet bookmark where you can get products or items mentioned in this video. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe for more great videos like these. I wish you the best of luck.